It started with a glimmer of hope. In spring 2011, the people took to the streets of Syria. After watching the Arab Spring in other countries, they decided to demonstrate for political reforms and democracy in their own country. But their story ended differently. President Assad's regime brutally struck down the protesters. But they fought back. A rebel army formed as peaceful protesters joined forces with army deserters. Battle lines were drawn. One of the bloodiest conflicts of the 21st century began in Syria. Other world powers used the conflict for their advantage to spread their influence in the region. Moscow and Tehran supported Assad, while the United States and Turkey gave their support to the rebel troops. The Assad government regained control of Syria, but their victory was blunted. The country lay in ruins. It's the civilians who have suffered most. Since the beginning of the war, at least half a million Syrians have been killed. More than 6 million Syrians have left the country. Another 6.2 million are still displaced within Syria. More than half of them children. Ten years later, for the people of Syria, peace is still a long way away. And today we are shining a light on one of the most prominent figures of Syria's pro-democracy movement, human rights lawyer and activist Razan Zatouni. She was kidnapped by armed men in 2013 and her fate remains unresolved. DW's investigative unit has been retracing her steps to learn more about events at the start of Syria's bitter civil war. My name is Razan Zaytouni, a human rights activist from Damascus. When protests erupted across Syria in March 2011, rights activist Razan Zaytouni was on the front line. She was key to revolutionary efforts across the country. Beside her was her close friend Mazen Dawish. We meet the human rights lawyer in Paris. For me, the most important aspect of Razan's personality is her rejection of injustice and her willingness to do anything to fight injustice. When the Assad regime responded with a bloody crackdown, arresting thousands of activists, Razan made sure the world would know. She became a key source. She had this sort of softness, almost frailty to her when you met her at the beginning, and you're like, how is she doing this very dangerous job? And then as soon as you spoke to her, you immediately discovered the sort of steely courage and principles. In 2013, Razan fled regime held Damascus for Duma, a town that would later be dominated by the hardline militant group Jaish al-Islam. Razan launched women's initiatives, fought for the rule of law and documented human rights abuses, including those committed by armed rebels. All that made her a competitor for Jaish al-Islam, to its control, to its ideology and its desire to establish an emirate or caliphate. Razan was targeted several times. A bullet left at her doorstep and an anonymous letter obtained by DW threatening her life. The words, I will kill you, repeated five times. Her trusted confidant, Nadim Huri, asked her to leave Duma. She responded the next day saying, I am not going to move. We did not do a revolution and lose thousands of souls so that such monsters can come and repeat the same unjust history. These people need to be held to account, just like the regime. On December 9, 2013, armed men stormed her office. They abducted Razan together with her husband and two fellow activists. After years of investigation, human rights lawyer Mazen Darwish and his team are confident that Jaish al-Islam are responsible. They gave us exclusive access to their findings. Additional witness statements we collected in Syria and Turkey corroborate that Razan was held by the Islamists before her trail goes cold. 
We've confronted high-ranking members of Jaysh al-Islam, but they strongly denied any involvement in the abduction. However, a judicial investigation is underway by the French war crimes unit here in Paris, and a former top official of the group has already been arrested in connection with the case. Mazen Darwish hopes that the investigation will finally bring clarity. For him, Razan's absence is reminiscent of the pro-democracy movement in Syria. The fate of Razan and her colleagues resembles that of the civil peaceful movement that tried to create a moral alternative for Syria. They were crushed between the regime and these Islamist groups that in the end are authoritarian as well. Eight years after Razan and her colleagues disappeared, their fate remains one of the great mysteries of the revolution. But friends and relatives have not given up hope that one day they will know the truth. Well, joining me now from Bonn is Louis Sanders from uh, DW's investigative unit who helped file this report. Louis, it's been more than seven years, nearly eight years, since Razan Zatouni and her colleagues disappeared. In your view, is there any chance of finding them after all this time? That is a tough question. Uh, there are credible indications that she was held alive for a number of years after she was abducted, after the abduction of her and her uh, husband and colleagues. And part of the work that we're doing right now is following up on some of those leads and corroborating some of this information. Um, but of course, you know, there are challenges along the ways. There are also false leads. So part of our process is being able to uh, parse through that information. Now, you know, what is important to note, though, is that uh, Razan Zaytuna was such a prolific figure. She was so instrumental to the, uh, de you know, establishing democratic structures early on in Syria. And so uh, understanding what happened to her and her colleagues is absolutely key to understanding what happened to the pro-democracy movement in Syria. And so it is our hope that our investigation will shed light on what happened to them and uh, hopefully solve one of the uh, greatest uh, mysteries of the Syrian revolution. Hmm. Uh, Louis, we, we heard in, in your report there that uh, Razan was up against a group called Jaysh al-Islam. Tell us more about them. Well, it's worth noting that we have been in contact with Jaysh al-Islam and they continue to deny their involvement in the abduction. Now, what's interesting about this group is that they were, you know, it's largely comprised uh, of uh, Salafists who were targeted before the revolution by the Assad regime. And uh, when the revolution comes, they take the opportunity to take up arms and, and fight. And so, uh, you know, you have this revolutionary Islamist militant group uh, that, that on the one hand is fighting the Assad regime, but on the other, they have also been, uh, you know, accused of very serious international crimes. We're talking about crimes against humanity. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about torturing of civilian detainees. And so, uh, you know, you have this happening over the past decade. Now, just a couple years ago, the political leader of the group was the head of the opposition delegation to peace talks in Geneva, in Astana. So. So what's quite interesting of this group is that, you know, they have somehow, their actions have somehow managed to fly under the radar of the international community while remaining one of the strongest armed opposition groups in Syria today. Louis Sanders, thank you very much for this update. Thank you. And you can help DW, which continues to investigate the disappearance of Razan Zaytouni and her colleague. If you have any information regarding their whereabouts or the circumstances of their abduction or captivity, you can contact us securely as at dw.tips at protonmail.com.